What's happening, party people? Man, I'm on the run today. Don't know if I'm going to get out of this hotel by checkout, but I'm going to try. I got about five people to see today en route to Portland. I'm going to go through Olympia. I had to go check on somebody's car downtown. I'm going to go through, I think it's called Long Beach, and then I'm going to go to Portland. should be in Portland this evening. I hope Diane don't mind all these stops. But I uh, had a great day yesterday. Helped a guy troubleshoot some stuff on his 940. Met a couple of guys that had a little bit newer cars. One had a V70R, another one had an S80. Never seen an S80 with Colombian wheels on it. That was kind of strange. But hey, I want to remind you guys, I'm headed to Portland. If you are within an hour's drive of Portland, I am down to connecting with you, trying to help you. And if you're outside of that area and you need some help, let me know and I'll try to make arrangements to travel to your area like I would go through Eugene, stuff like that to help you out. Now, if you're in the Patreon site, don't forget to watch the videos. There's a few special videos in there that have not been released to the public yet. And when you watch the video, you let the video go to all the way to the very end and the video should give you pop-ups to the related videos. Some of you guys are missing some things in there. I don't want you to miss stuff in there that you get to see. So I'm getting people tell me when you go to Portland, stop at IPD. Man, I've been buying parts from IPD for since 1988. <laughs> I've been buying parts from IPD longer than half of you uh, guys been alive or half the employees been alive down there. Anyway, I'm going to go by IPD. A uh, great place. They've been doing things for the Volvo community probably 40, 50 years. I'm excited to stop by there. Now, if you hadn't watched the video, I'm getting messages from people saying, hey, where are you located at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I, man, on the front of every video, I post where I'm at, and in the first minute or two, I say where I'm at. How can somebody not know where I'm at? It's blowing me away. I got a message from a guy yesterday named Darren down in San Jose. He wants to do a manual swap, and we communicated throughout the day yesterday. It looks like I'm going to be able to pick up all the donor parts for him so that when I get down near San Jose, I can go to him and do a manual swap on his 850. If you want something done and you're prepared to get the parts, let's do this thing, man. That's something that we can knock out of the park. I can do a manual swap probably two days. Hotel, 50 an hour if you can afford it. And man, we get that stuff done for you. So that's where it's at. Now, usually after I pay somebody a visit and do work for them or whatever, I'll send them a text message and let them know the cost of my visit. Now, depending on how many hours and stuff like that I spend there, it depends on if I want you to cover that cost for the day. Normally, anything over four hours, I would like for you to cover the room and cost of living for the day. So how that text message has come through is like I explained in that video. I'll send you two numbers. The first number is going to be what it costs me to help you. So if I stayed in a hotel, I had to buy me and Diane Mills, I had to drive an hour, it cost me gas, I had to buy two tools to do your job, it might cost me $250. Then if it took me five hours to do it and you can afford $50 an hour, that's another $250. So that job costs $500. So the text message will say, look, the hard cost was $250. That's what it cost me to help you. And if you're covering that plus labor, pay $500. So the low number will be $250. That's what it costs me. The high number will be my hard cost plus the labor. That's $500. So I'm going to say, hey, the cost for your job is between $250 and $500. Pay anything between that, I'm fine. Now, I have a couple of guys that are gracious and generous. They do more than that. Uh, for instance, my brother-in-law, even though he's my brother-in-law, he pays me close to shop cost. He don't always do it, but, you know, something that costs $400 at the shop, he'd rather pay me that $400 than pay a shop $400. Well, heck, he's an attorney. He's making all the money in the world. 
He can afford to do that. I don't expect people that's living every day like you and I to pay shop costs. Or you can just take the car to the shop, get the shop warranty, and have something backed up for a year. I got a 38-minute warranty. I don't expect you to pay shop fees. But if you can afford to cover my costs, I'm thrilled with that. If you can afford to cover my costs, I like a warning. I don't want to get to your location, lollygag around for an hour, spend four hours working on it, and then you tell me, oh, here's $25. Well, I done spent, you know, five, six hours at your location, and I spent money on a hotel and all that and didn't know you didn't have anything to cover my hard costs. That's not fair to me. So warn me. I have done it. I've gone to people's place. I've spent four or five hours there. I've worked, fixed things, and they couldn't afford to pay. I've got my car and left. No problem, no pressure. I'm okay with that. But I would like to have a warning because I'm not going to lollygag around and hang out with you and talk to you about different things if you can't cover my hard expenses and some of the labor. So that's, I hope you guys understand that. But anyway... I'm headed towards Portland, hopefully be there this evening, start helping people tomorrow, and I'll stay in the Portland area as long as people need me. Then I'll move toward the south, getting closer to sunny California. So if you got any questions, call or text. If you got any uh, thing you need, uh, let me know. If you want some guidance on parts, let me know. Get your parts. If you can cover hard costs, let me know. If you can't, let me know. We'll still try to get you helped and sorted out. Having a great time. So, had a great time yesterday. Plan to have a great time today. Plan to have a great time tomorrow. So, we're just going to have a great time, enjoy life, and keep these Volvos and whatever else you got going on on the road. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's videos. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicking off the day, I started out in winter mode. And by the time I got to the corner, the car is shifting fine. So, my secret to getting my car to shift right when I start out today is to start out in winter mode. I seem to be good to go. So, we'll see how that plays out in the next few days. But, man, it is shifting smooth as silk. I'm going to drop the fluid one more time here in the next day or two hopefully I get time and opportunity. I'm going to replace this air dam under there. Very few of these things have this on here. So I'm going to take this and transfer it over to here. Most of those are missing. And uh, get this installed. And then put those lower dash panels on and we'll be done with this 850. Get on this 245. This thing here is held in by two clips. One on this side. Went on that side, pull those out, transfer that over. It also channels in the bottom right there. So you have to un unchannel that. And there we go, people. Got those hooks on there. Got this up on this side, that up on that side. Like new. Now I'm a little surprised that more of you guys don't know this, but I'm finding a lot of these panels not installed properly. So this little hook there goes into that chamber right here behind that hood release. And then the tab that's on the side of the heater core box secures this edge of this panel. So the front edges of those panels are held in place by those two slots and then this end of the panel is held in by these three screws. So, you get this corner and that corner hooked into those slots and that will hold the panel in position. And then you screw these front screws in. Snug them down, don't tighten them so you don't break the dash. I never saw this before and I didn't really realize they were right and left. But somebody has installed the 
passenger side door pulls on the driver's side. These things are supposed to be facing the other direction. I don't know if he wants them like that, so I'm going to leave them. But those things are flipped from one side of the car to the other. So we're all done with this ride. I'm going to move on to the 240. Get this thing back together, people. Party people. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the heater control valve on this 240 Volvo. I believe this is a 86 model. The most common thing that these heater control valves do is leak. Occasionally, they blow out and you lose control. They seep internally, but most of the time they leak. Now, they no longer supply the original part, so you have to get the updated version of this heater control valve. And it's a aftermarket part that we have. It's a MTC. And you just have to do some minor modifications to get this new one to work. The owner bought this kit from IPD. MTC company makes it. It comes with this bracket. Uh, some kind of thing there. A couple of hoses. A new valve. Some clips, a screw, some insulation. And this cable here. So we're going to use the instructions that come from where he got it, IPD. If you get some bad looking instructions like this, you can go to IPD's website. Nine times out of ten and find clear PDF versions of these instructions. So I've got those pulled up on my phone. And we're going to use these to go ahead and get this conversion done. First thing you want to do is open the hood. Pull that plunger there. Hold it for two, three seconds. Make sure the hood releases. Come out here and lift the hood up. Put your fingers under here and you can feel the tab right, right here. Lift that up, lift the hood up. You're moving this tab right here, kind of a paddle. You want the car to be cool so that it's not having hot cooling in here and pressure build up in the system. You could open this up just to make sure there's no pressure there close it back next thing you want to do is put hose pinchers on the heater hoses these two hoses right here behind your transmission and oil dipstick yellow ones transmission red ones engine and those two hoses right there are your heater hoses you want to pinch those off to prevent coolant from running in there when you disconnect the valve from the inside this will make less coolant run into the car so I'm going to get some hose pinched and clamp those off. I got the hoses pinched off next step is to come inside next thing you want to do is take these two fasteners loose to get this side panel off of here then take this fasteners loose to get this material from under here, I think it also has a couple of fasteners down there on the floor. Peel this back, and then you should take and peel the carpet back a little bit out of your way so that you can have full access to this stuff here. Do -do -do -do. Let me get this out of the way with two hands a little bit. Cause that's your heater control valve there old school style any stuff you see down here in this floor like this you want to go ahead and vacuum that stuff out i'm gonna go ahead and remove this all-weather floor mat just to get my carpet a little bit more flexibility to come out down here so now i see my heater hose connections to this old heater control valve I'm going to put a trash bag under here to try to catch most of the coolant that I'm going to spill. Then I'm going to take that clamp loose there, that clamp loose there, and pull those hoses off of this heater control valve, catching any of the liquid in a trash bag. You also want some rags available. If some spill, you can mop it up, clean it up with the rags. Let me go ahead and disconnect both of these hoses and pull them off this valve. I got those hose clamps loose. Next, I'm going to undo this cable. So I'm going to take this screw loose here, 
and I'm gonna take this screw loose here so I can get this cable out from this control valve. I'm gonna take that screw out of that bracket right there. Now that I have the valve down away from the chamber, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug those hoses, catching any coolant that spills. I'm also gonna pull this out of this box and then cover that hole with tape or something. I don't think you no longer need that piece of the heater control valve with the new valve. The instructions recommended putting a hose clamp on that hose as well. Do it. That thing seems to never stop leaking in here. My bag got away from me. I got some on the floor and I got to mop that up. I got rags down here and that thing is still leaking coolant. It's never ending. I'm going to tell you. I got at least half a gallon in here and it's still coming. I got this pulled out, this old heater control valve. I'm going to put this plug back in there. To plug that, they say you can tape that hole. And I pulled this out of there too and it broke coming out. So I'm going to use this to plug the heater box there. And that coolant is still coming out of there. I don't know if that thing was near finished yet, but I finally found something to plug the hole with. Stop it. I'm going to carefully pull this out. Pour it in the little tank I have. Let me get some paper towels and get all this coolant up that spill. But it looks like my little plug stopped it for now. Next, I'm going to remove that clip down there that screw up there that side panel so I could get this front piece off that has these buttons on it and out of the way so I can attach the cable. To get this bracket out from up there man you gotta pull real hard because that little clip kind of latches on it. You pull hard enough it'll pop out. Took me some hard pulling. Next I'm gonna remove the old control cable and it is through a clip here. I don't know, I don't have this out of the way too far, but there's a clip in here that releases this cable. So, I'm gonna go ahead. That's the clip, release the cable. I'm gonna unhook this cable from this control there. It's gonna take two hands. This next step I've been totally confused on, but I think what they're telling me to do is take this bracket here and bend this so that it's straight. It's not flat this way, it's flat this way. And route the cable through that hole, over that bellow, and up to the connector for the controller. Now that I have this brace bent, I'm going to run the cable through this top hole over through this radio stuff and try to get it hooked back up to the control lever there. So let's run this through there and get that hooked up. You gotta be gentle with that thing so you don't break it. If you break it, well, you're on your own. Somehow passing this up through the hole landed that cable right there by that connecting arm. So I'm going to get that in the connecting arm and get it clipped down the way it's supposed to be so that I can get some control on it. So that's the tip of the cable. I'm going to put it in the connecting arm for the slide. Securing this cable up here where it goes in that bracket. This new bracket from IPD doesn't fit. I can't get it on. When I get this one on, it's a little loose. So I'm going to put a little metal around it. I ten snipped this little bit of metal from my 850 straps metal. And I'm going to put that on the cable. And then I'm going to put this on it. And hopefully that will hold that cable tighter in position. So let me try that. I tried to put an extra piece of metal in there. It slipped worse. So... I tried to stake that hole a little more. Hopefully that'll grab it better. If that doesn't grab it better, I'm going to zip tie it to the bottom of this radio box. Seems to be holding better now when I 
to slide the lever all the way to cold and go to hot it doesn't move you don't want that cable moving up in there you want it to stay where it is so staking it helped it so you could look in there it's closed at cold and when you go to hot it opens up let's cool it through cold hot let me go ahead and hook this part of it up next I screwed the hose bracket onto the bracket I couldn't get the screw that they provided to start cutting into the metal so I used one of the ones that I already had I used for supporting 850 dashes so I got a screw in there now I'm gonna put this foam in here and I'm gonna position this thing up in here so that it'll be in place and I'm gonna hook that hose up then hook the other hose up on the other side they got a new hose they provided for the top side put the foam in there like that now I'm gonna hook that heater hose up there remember you got to be gentle with that thing so you don't break it if you break it you're on your own so I'm gonna slide this clamp over that hose oh there's already one on there I'm gonna hook that hose up to that heater valve now that I got the hose connected on the back side of that I'm going to put the bracket on there and put this in the bracket and then put the front hose on and it should hold it in place <laughs> I had to clip this around that hose I might have to reach that from the other side so I'm gonna slide this in there and then I'm gonna put a clip on the front of it they gave to lock it in place we find that clip I don't quite understand how they expect you to get that hose clip on the back it's in position couldn't really get it to stay snapped when I snapped it pushed it back there it came loose I slid this bracket in and I slid that tab on there to hold it in place now I'm gonna put this hose on here from up top there to here and they also say you should bend this back so I'm gonna bend this bracket back in the position was well, not fun getting that hose off the top because you got to have channel locks to break it loose then wiggle it off this hose don't quite mold perfectly but I'm gonna put it on like this and hook it up to that valve have a slight bend in it so this short snake end is going to be on there so let me get a clamp on it and get it routed up there and pushed on and get some progress going on this thing and this is it I got it on there the hose is on there everything's on and you can see the heat valve move from hot to cold hot cold hot cold should be good to go if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that i post you can follow me on twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them again thank you very much for watching